Hello my friends, welcome back to Keto in the Chaos. My name is Tammy and on this channel I like to share all my tips and tricks on how I lost 200 pounds without bariatric surgery and how you can be successful on your own weight loss journey. So if that's what you're looking for, don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the bell for more videos like this one to inspire you to get started. everyone welcome back to another video I am so glad you stopped by to check in on me on my tummy tuck update I'm excited about this video in today's video we're gonna be talking about how things are going for me four months post tummy tuck so if you're new here you may not know that I had a full lower body lift that's a 360 degree tummy tuck basically um, with a fleur-de-lis, which is a vertical incision, muscle repair for a huge diastasis recti, I believe it was 15 centimeters, and also a thigh lift. So I definitely have been in recovery for these last few months, and today's update is going to be talking about how I'm feeling, what activity I'm able to do, how much pain I am feeling at the moment, um, swelling, how that's going, and of course I will be showing you my scar a little later on the video so that you can see how that is looking four months post-op. But before I get into the video, I wanted to thank the sponsor for this video, The Ombre Company. So I don't know if you guys have heard about this company, but I'm super excited. When they reached out to me, I thought this was the perfect thing for me to try for my next step in my weight loss journey. And part of that is because of so much crazy that's been happening in my life. So Ombre is a company that will basically home test your stool to see whether or not your gut is in great shape or not, your gut bacteria. Um, me personally, why I decided that this was going to be a good idea with so much crazy that's been going on the last few months at my house, like I can't even go on and on. I've had dietary changes from high carb, low carb, um, high fat, low fat, all over the place, processed food, non-processed food, you name it, I've tried it in the last few months because things have been so up and down. Of course, I had my lower body lift surgery and that threw a wrench into everything for a very long time. I ate all of the things, gained some weight, also with the surgery I had to do, I had a UTI right before, so I had to do an antibiotic and then I did more antibiotics after I had the surgery. So possibly killed off all my gut bacteria, who knows. I took some probiotics, but who knows if they were any good. I just bought a random one off the shelf. I don't know if they're good or not. Don't know if they, were, if they had what I needed and I obviously I didn't take them for very long. And then on top of it all, I got COVID. So. Who knows how that affects anything? So I thought this is good timing for me to do a check-in and see how my gut is going to be doing. So watch for a future video on my results from my ombre test, but I just wanted to thank the company for sponsoring this video and, and let you guys know that ombre is offering my subscribers $30 off, which is a huge discount. Normally the test runs $99, but for you, you can get it for 69 by clicking in the link below in the description. Check out Ombre. That price is amazing for being able to figure out if there's something going on in your gut that is preventing you from losing weight. Apparently your gut bacteria being off and like it, basically the bad ones can overtake the good ones. I don't exactly understand how it all works, but it can affect your mood, gas, bloating. My depression and anxiety have been out of control ever since COVID, so I'm curious whether or not the gut fixing my gut health can help with something like that. Obviously, I've been struggling trying to get the weight off since I had my surgery, so I don't know if maybe my gut health plays into that as well. So it can't hurt to find out, and I'm excited to do that. So you should definitely check the link in the about section if you have ever been thinking about checking in with your gut health and your gut bacteria to see if your inner body is doing everything that it could be for your health. All right, so let's get into the video. Four months post-op. My activity level, this is the first thing I wanna talk about is my activity level. So when I first had, well, coming into my surgery, it was a big deal for me to be in muscle building mode. I was doing a lot of walking, trying to do some strength training and eating a little bit higher calorie and higher carb going into the surgery because I wanted my body to already be in like healing mode, if that makes sense. And so that is what I was doing leading into surgery. Post-surgery, my focus was protein. Um, I didn't care where I got it from. I didn't care how much I ate. My goal was to eat as much protein as I humanly could. 
I have to admit, a lot of people told me that you would not be able to eat very much after a tummy tuck, that it would like, your stomach would be like, your muscle repair would cause you to feel full all the time. I am not that blessed, friends. No, I could eat all of the things from day one, and I did. And I was happy to do that. In fact, I planned to do that. That was part of my healing plan was to allow myself to eat however many calories I needed to eat in order to feel healthy and satiated and just, I mean, come on, let's be real. I was sitting in my bed forever. So <laughs> sometimes there are times in our life where food does become the medicine and that is what I did post-surgery. Then we got to the point where I was starting to notice that I don't think it's, I, it was as much swelling as it was I was putting on body fat in the areas where I thought I was swelling. It seemed like the body fat kind of took over the swelling area and yeah, anything, anyway, things got a little bit out of control that way. So about, what, two months, three months post-up, I started back to, to doing dance. So as far as activity level goes, pretty much I'm doing the same things that I was in the last video. Um, I've definitely been doing a lot more dancing because we are preparing for Nutcracker. I am a party parent in the Nutcracker. Probably saw that in one of my pro previous videos of me practicing and things like that. Um, we are also gearing up for our Christmas performance for clogging and contemporary. I have to admit the clogging dance is a little overwhelming and I don't think I'm going to be doing it super awesomely on stage, but whatever, I'm doing my best and putting in the work and doing the best I can, right? Oh my gosh. But the contemporary dance I'm super excited about. I really feel like since I had my tummy tuck, I feel free to like jump and like leap and like do the things that contemporary requires without being worried that my like stomach is gonna like jiggle. Oh, that was the worst. Like I really love dancing and I've always wanted to do it. But every time I get out there and my stomach's going like this as bad as my boobs, it's just like, oh, ugh. I can't stand it. And so I actually really like watching my practice videos and things like that because I feel like I look actually like I know how to dance, which weird. It's just like, I can't even believe this is me. Let's be real. So my activity level is about, like I said, about the same, but I am putting in the work. I am putting a little effort into it, but I have not started back into any real strength training other than um, I do some chair lifts once a week as I just do and some sit-ups, some lower body lift, like leg lift type things, just a little bit. Planks, nothing drastic. Um, I'm not, I've never been one to just like want to be exercising all the time. That is not how I lost my weight. I didn't do much cardio to lose weight. It was all mostly diet, which means my calories have to be pretty low to lose weight. But I was willing to sacrifice that more than I was willing to go to the gym. Who knows what will happen in the future? But, you know, I mean, I might decide I want to do that. I don't know. Who knows? Anything could happen, guys. Anything could happen. But right now, I am not feeling pain when I exercise. The only place that's still giving me a little bit of pain is right up at the top of my um, Fleur de Lis, but it's the muscle repair. So it's the top of the muscle repair, um, probably where it was widest and he had to pull it really close together that kind of burns sometimes. And when I do like planks and stuff, I can feel it. It's not terribly, terribly like painful. Like I can still do the exercises. I just notice it. So for the most part, there's no pain, like none anywhere except that. So that's awesome. So yeah, pain is what I wanted to talk about next. Uh, the pain is pretty much gone at this point. Honestly, I feel like the whole entire experience was much less painful than I imagined. Um, the thigh lift was way more painful at the beginning than everything else, but now it has the least amount of pain ever. Like I don't feel it. Plus I don't feel numb where the thigh lift was. Um, my fleur de -lis, was somewhat painful and like the actual tummy tuck scar was somewhat painful and of course the lower body left it was pretty stingy and still sometimes gets a little tender if I'm feeling swollen along my back but the thing that lasts the longest was the muscle repair I didn't feel it in the beginning in fact I, if I hadn't had a picture that he sent me of my actual muscle repair I wouldn't believe he'd actually done it um it didn't hurt as bad as I thought it should but I will but <laughs> the good old but it lasted longest. So the pain from the muscle repair lasted longer than everything else. In fact, like that's where I'm still feeling that pain at the top. So pain wise, 
The muscle repair definitely is the most painful part. I did not do lipo. I hear lipo is pretty painful. Um, out of all of the skin incisions, I would say the thigh lift hurt the most. And then second, the back, along the back lift, I mean, along the top of my behind, stung pretty bad at the beginning. But I'm having, like I said, no trouble doing everything that I need to do or that I want to do or, you know, I'm doing my, I'm living my best life right now. And it's, it's hard because like I said earlier, I came right out of surgery, finally got better and then got COVID and it has kind of thrown me for a loop. COVID has. So like mentally I feel different. I have a harder time talking. My anxiety levels are higher. I, I'm spewing forth ridiculousness at the mouth. Okay. I used to do that all the time, but I have come with coping techniques where I don't like word vomit on every single person that I talk to. And lately it's like no filter, which is frustrating. I don't really want everybody in the whole planet to know everything about me every time they meet me. And it's doing, I'm doing that again. And it's like all my ADHD symptoms that I felt like I had controlled are kind of like coming out of the woodwork. The things that make me me and the things that make me awesome at doing like YouTube and things like that are not blessings in the real world. Let's be real. <laughs> Everyone does like to talk to me and I can talk a good streak, but most of the time I talk too much and tell too much about my personal self. Does that make sense? So yeah, that's where I'm at with that. But that means I'm getting back to normal, right? So boop, 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 boop. oh my goodness. Um, so the third thing that people always want to know the most about is the swelling. Swelling is something that people don't really even realize is a thing as they're looking into getting a tummy tuck surgery or any surgery for that matter. I had no idea the swelling could be so ridiculous. Um, just a few weeks ago, the swelling was going down and I was starting to see my abs and I was getting feeling like my, my calorie deficit was working even though the scale wasn't cooperating and I'm just like enjoying things and like feeling good and the next thing I know what the crap it's like i've gone back in time two months i've not ne i've never seen such swelling as i am experiencing the last few days like what the oh i can't even so four months out no change in diet no explanation whatsoever all of a sudden i'm just like we're talking like my hips went up two inches overnight my waist went up two inches overnight it it's painful the area where I thought was getting better around my T incision all of a sudden swelled up like a giant apple again. Like, it is so hard to explain the swelling. Like, it is so hard to explain. In fact, when I did the video of my actual scar, I was not as swollen as I am this morning. When I looked in the mirror, I was like, what happened? I literally look huge. It's really, really frustrating. So I just have to keep reminding myself it's part of the journey. It's part of the surgery. It's just, there's nothing I can do about it. And it does throw a wrench into the works when I'm trying to get that scale to go down. And me, I am just a water retaining sunny again. You know, I just do it. And I've always done that. And it's part of who I am. So I guess I can't expect a surgery to make or to be indifferent. Like I am, I feel like I'm retaining water more so than most people who do this surgery. I see people losing weight after surgery and I'm like, that is not me. I am literally the same still four months out. I went up really quickly that week and then I'm still the same four months out. Yes, it can be frustrating, but I try not to let it get to me because like this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I don't have any data to support what is going on. And so the only thing I can do is just keep walking forward keep on with my calorie deficit, keep doing what I plan to do, and hopefully it all works out. <laughs> all right, so that's everything about the update and how things are going for me. Um, if you guys have questions about the tummy tuck, I would love to do a QA. and a If you really have burning desire questions, you really need to know the answers to that I haven't given, or if you'd like me to do a QA and a video, never really done that, feel free to comment in the comment section. If nobody comments, I won't do that. But um, I feel like I've been pretty thorough in answering questions, but I really don't know now that I'm four months out, like what people have, what expectations people have like for these updates. I really think that you're just here to see the scar. 
Am I right or am I right? So I am excited to show you the scar and I recorded this a few days ago and I am, well anyway, let's just get to it. Alrighty guys, so I was making this video in the morning when Dave was asleep and I didn't want to disturb him so I decided to do a voiceover. Here I am going to be showing you my tummy tuck scar starting with my fleur de lis and I'm going to show you the fleur de lis scar. So the fleur de lis is the vertical incision it goes down the front of my stomach. I needed this because of excess loose skin above the belly button and so I went ahead and had that done. Um, you can see that the scar goes all the way up to between my breasts but that the scar is really thin and it's looking really nice. I'm going to turn the light on here and hopefully you can see it a little bit better. You can see how cute my scar, my stretch marks that went like chevron shaped when he pulled the skin kind of like in a diagonal toward the center. Um, if you look from the side, you can see this loose skin on the top that the doctor is thinking he might want to revise. We are going to address that in January when I go in. Um, I have to suck in super weird just to get it to hang over. It's like when I sit, it bothers me, but for the most part, it doesn't really bother me that much. Um, here you can see my belly button. You can see my belly button scar. So if I pull on it, you can see the red line around it. But if I just stand here, it just looks normal, kind of hooded with that loose skin above the top, which, you know, makes it look more normal in my opinion. But if I pull on it, like you can see the redness around the belly button where the actual stitching was. But for the most part, that scar does not bother me because you can really not see it when I am not pulling it open directly. Um, this actually in the way is my, um, one of my scar treatments that I use. This is bio oil. I use bio oil, um, and also another product, Aven, I don't know how to say it, Aven, Psychalfate. Anyway, it is a silicone gel. It's one of the best priced ones I found. It's lasts the longest out of the ones I've tried. So I use the silicone gel in the morning and the bio oil at night. Okay, so next thing I'm going to show you is um, the area where, the other area where the doctor thinks that I should maybe be revised. Um, I have a little bit of weird swelling right here at the T scar line. You can kind of see it. it's like a little bump on the side here. When I turn to the side, you can see it. If I suck in, you cannot see it. But yeah, for the most part, this loose skin does not bother me too much. Um, but I do have some because this on the sides was from the not being able to do the back. Okay, so next I'm going to show you guys my T-zone scar, my T scar. This is where the lower body lift meets the fleur de lis. And as you can see, it kind of has a strange shape. I don't know when the doctor revises that if he will change the shape and make it more like directly across. I hope so because that would make me happier. Um, you can see right here I've got some wrinkles still where it kind of like pulled my very stretched out <laughs> um, Mons area skin up but for the most part it's looking really really good right through here um, you can see it's lightening up a lot I don't have that hard piece as much underneath that I did about a month ago um, I haven't really done anything for it I've been meaning to massage it but other than this, this basically pushing on it like this um, that is literally all I have done. Um, I haven't done a lot of the suction cups or the massage balls or all the things that I was doing last month. I've just been too busy. But yeah, right here you can really see a little bit of a definition of where that little bubble of whatever is. And he says he wants to clean that up. Whatever that means, I do not know. So yeah, um, now that the scars are lightening up, the, the up and down on the sides of my hips don't bother me as much as they did in the beginning. In the beginning, I just felt like I was completely lopsided, and I am kind of still lopsided, but the scars are fading so much, especially this side. Like, you can see, like, there's areas right through here where I, sometimes I can't even see the scar at all, which is really crazy. And over here, it goes up on my hip more. I kind of wish they both match. I wish the other one went up on my hip also so that they match, but whatever. You know, like, it's not something that really bothers me, but you can see this one's a lot darker. Um, my drain hole scars are healing up. Ironically, they're healing up better on this side than they are on the other side, which used to be the other way around. These ones are really fading out, you can see, but the other side, not so much. I'll show you that in a second. Here's the other side, the drain scars. The top one's not so bad, but the bottom one is really dark still, which is kind of funny to me, but... 
you know, they don't really bother me. They're kind of like, you know, a mole, having a mole. I kind of wish they were a little bit less like symmetrical up and down so that maybe they would look more like a mole, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. No one's seeing that but me. Maybe Dave occasionally. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> But for the most part, I'm really happy, especially with how the scar is on the back here. Um, last month, I talked about it being kind of ropey underneath. Um, as far as now, it is not ropey anymore. So, like, um, I did a, I did do the massage like this up and down in circles, pulling my skin tight and rubbing back and forth. Um, that kind of thing to help with that. But that's literally all I did. That I'm putting on those scar gels that I talked about is all. Um, I, I am disappointed that the scar is straight. I really wanted it to be curved and like peachy across, but I really love the shape of my back and I think it looks good. So I'm happy I had that done. So let's move. Let's see, what can I do about this? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you my thigh scars. You can, from here, you cannot really see them, um, like unless you're up close and personal. They are right here, believe it or not. They are fading so much that it's hard to see. I'm gonna come close so that you can see them, but you can see right here, that is how much they show in the front, which is really not bad at all. By next summer, probably, it won't even show very much at all and it'll be great for swimsuit season. Um, the inner scar, I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So you can see where the scar goes uh, alongside it. This side is actually darkest. It is, it's always been. And this is where the scar starts. And it goes down to there. Really doesn't look that bad at all. I was expecting it to be a lot worse. Um, you can see my thighs still have some jiggle. <laughs> Obviously, there's only so much they can do, but they removed at least that really papery skin. Look at this side is a lot lighter, and that makes me happy. I'm hopeful that both sides will eventually be like that. This is the beginning of the scar all the way down to the end. So yeah, I'm happy with my thigh lift. Um, I had a lower body lift and a thigh lift. This is about as good as it gets. <laughs> For me, who's lost so much weight, I just have a lot of loose skin and I still have quite a bit of fat in my thighs. In fact, um, they're bigger than they used to be before I had the surgery. But yeah, I'm really happy with everything. Um, even when I'm standing here and I'm not sucking in or anything, I'm still so nice and pulled in that it doesn't bother me. But yeah, for pictures and stuff, I do like to suck in so that I can look super skinny. But you know what? Before the surgery, I never in a million years could suck in enough to make myself look skinny at all. So I am really happy with that. Um, I do sometimes get some swelling. I am not swollen today. This is me not swollen, at least as far as I know. You can really see how nicely defined my abs can get if I suck in. <laughs> so I love how I'm starting to look a little bit more hourglassy. Um, my waist is pulling in a lot more um, from the side. You can see out and in, and I really like my shape. I think it's great. Um, I will show you the back side again. Um, this, the shape of everything is really, really nice. Um, like I said, I didn't really, wasn't really happy about that top scar. This skin here is just got to be done with a bra line lift. He removed as much as he could with the lower body lift, but it is up here. I have to have it lifted. So when I have it lifted, you'll be able to see how much skin I still got back there and how skinnier I'll look on the front when I have that lifted. But I have to finish paying off this surgery first before I can afford to do the upper half. And of course my arms, which are pretty scary, as you can see. <laughs> um, I'm really happy with the whole thing. I don't know what else to say. Look how great I look. I mean, don't you wish you had a great body like this? Just kidding. Um, I have gained weight. So I wanna show you that um, in my arms and my bust and also my thighs and my bottom, I have gained some weight. Around my chest here, I used to be about 30 inches. And now I used to wear like a size 34 bra, but I probably could have gotten away with something smaller. Um, I'm going to show you guys how much I have grown. You will not believe it. So it was 30 around my rib cage before the surgery. And now you can see it is, I believe that says 34. Yeah, 34. 
My bust, as you can see here, has grown quite a bit. I used to be, I think, 36 before surgery, and now it is 41, depending on the bra. With my other bra, it's 42. What the heck? I mean, like, I've gone up from, like, a D to, like, a G cup, which is crazy. This bra I have on is a triple D, and I am popping out at the top. So, yeah, my um, waist before surgery was 27 when I would pull in all my skin tight. And now you can see it is seriously, not even kidding, like 34 and a half, 35. And it bounces between 34 and 36 inches every single day, depending on the amount of swelling. Crazy. I mean, I just can't believe it. My hips before surgery were 37. 37. And now we are to 41 to 42. It's, it bounces between 40 and 42, depending on the swelling. And that is my life right now, guys, which is depressing. Um, thighs used to be 18. Okay, that can't be right. The heck? Yesterday they're 21 and a half. And today this one is saying 23. Um, I'm going with 21 and a half because, like, that cannot be right. <laughs> and the other one, same thing. It used to be at 18 before surgery. And now... 21 and a half right so yeah that's kind of stressful I mean I obviously have gained some weight and my arms are looking really big and it's making it so shirts don't fit me very well which is kind of a pain I'm gonna measure my arms before surgery when I would pull it tight like this it was 10 and a half inches and now I'm getting I think can you see that uh, I think it says 13 Yeah, 13, which is really not good. Not stress, it's kind of stressful. So I have gained some weight, but dang, I, do I look good anyways? I don't care, I mean, come on. Who wouldn't be happy with this? I am definitely super happy. Um, trying to lean out a little bit, best I can, but I'm happy with how it, things have turned out. All right, guys. There you go. I mean, honestly, I cannot be disappointed. I feel like my scar look amazing. When I got out of the bath a few days ago, Dave happened to be in the bathroom and he was looking over at my scars. And I mean, he has seen them, you know, when it's not as light out, let's put it that way. But he hasn't really seen it in full time daylight until he saw me getting out of the tub and he was like, wow, your scars look really good. Like, I think he was surprised at how much they have faded and how great they look. Um, scar care wise, I think I talked about it a little bit. I'm just using bio oil and silico silicone gel. And that is all. It's like the Aven brand, I think. Um, that's all. I'm, I'm not doing anything special. I stopped doing the massage because I just am busy. I was going to say lazy and then I realized, no, I'm not. I am so busy. I just don't have time. I just don't have time and let's just be real. I don't want, when I come in my room, do I want to be like having to do massage therapy on the scars? No, I want to be laying in bed watching TV for five minutes if I can. <sighs> Not very often that I can't even do that. So <laughs> I feel like considering I haven't put that much effort into the scar care as I thought I would, it's looking pretty great. Um, we will see what next month brings. I will be checking in with you right before Christmas and letting you know what five months will look like. Um, six months, I may be talking about revision because I'm going to be seeing the plastic surgeon on January 4th. And that's when we're going to decide whether or not the little bit of loose skin I still have above my belly button needs to go and or fixing that area in my T-scar that I've talked about in other videos. I may have even, you know, I did talk about it in this one. Pretty sure. Let me know if I didn't. If I didn't can go back to the other videos. There's so many videos on my channel. <laughs> Watch them. So yeah, if you're new here and you really don't know how I lost all the weight and you want tips and tricks on that, I have playlists. If you go to my main channel page, click on playlists, there's like playlist after playlist after playlist that list off the different things. I have a recipes playlist. I have a keto cut playlist. I have a what to eat to lose weight playlist, etc., etc. I have a beginner's guide playlist. So if you're looking to get started on doing the weight loss the way I did it, there is tons of information here. Don't forget also our Facebook group where we give support. Um, I do not have a tummy tuck Facebook group. I do have one that I frequent that I did not start, but I do have a weight loss Facebook group 
called Keto Chaos if you want to check there's a link in the about section and also if you just want to be here to support the channel help me pay off this surgery so that I can do the next one there are all kinds of ways in the about section that you can do so and even an Amazon wish list if you want to send me something for my birthday which is coming up anyway November 30th is my birthday Shame. Happy birthday to me. Oh my gosh, I gotta go. Okay, thanks so much for hanging out with me. We'll talk to you all again soon.